Hoy en la noche del Lobo Cine os traigo una película del año 1936 de crimen y asesinato, Below the Deadline, dirigida por Charles Lamont, escrita por Edward Adamson y producida por George Bachelor, que fue un productor de cine estadounidense. Este dirigió el estudio de películas de bajo presupuesto Chesterfield Pictures en la década de 1930. Aunque las películas, como he dicho, eran de bajo presupuesto, sí tuvieron cierto éxito para la época. El film cuenta con un elenco magnífico. Cecilia Parker, Russell Hopton y Theodore Von Helth, entre otros. Después de que un policía irlandés de buen carácter fuese incriminado por un robo de diamantes y un asesinato, este es dado por muerto en un choque de trenes. Poco después, se somete a una cirugía plástica y regresa para exponer a los verdaderos asesinos. La película tiene una duración de 64 minutos y está en versión original subtitulada al español. Sin más, os dejo con Below the Deadline. now below the deadline, the financial and diamond district. Here there are more diamonds by the square foot than any part of the world, including the Transvaal. Good afternoon, Captain. How are you, Peter? Oh, hello, Captain Tyler. Hello, Wally. The Ravens is expecting you. Thank you. How are you, Mr. Abrams? Oh, good afternoon, Captain. Sit down. Thanks. Have a cigar? Well, thank you. What's on your mind? Uh, these diamonds. These and a lot more to come. And, uh, oh, pardon. This is Mr. Everly, Captain Simon. Mr. Everly? I'm glad to know you, Captain. Mr. Everly and I are negotiating a very large consignment of diamonds, and we thought that you should be warned about it. The wise precaution. Are you collecting the consignment here? Yes, they're for my firm in Chicago. But uh, they're not to be shipped for nearly a week. Well, don't worry. We've got a pretty good line on all the boys in town. And not one of them will dare to shove his nose below the deadline. I'll just tell my men to keep their eyes peeled. And if they do see anybody below the deadline that looks suspicious at all, to bring them in for questioning. Oh, by the way, uh, where is your deadline now, Captain? Still Canal Street? Yes. And if any of them come south of that line, it'll be just too bad. Well, so long. Bye-bye. <coughs> well, I know where to get a nice solitaire for you, Molly, as soon as you give Terry Mulvaney the gate. You'll be too old by that time, Captain Simon. Oh, you're never too old. <laughs> <coughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Uh, good day, Captain. Goodbye.
Well, Miss Fitzgerald, would you mind working an hour or two later tonight? Certainly not, Mr. Raven. Then as soon as you're through, bring in your notebook. Hello, Molly McDonald. Terry, dear, I have to work late tonight, so don't wait for me. I'll have supper downtown. You can meet me near the subway entrance around nine. <laughs> sure, darling, I'll be there with me buttons all shine. Right. Good evening, sister. How about a lift? What's the matter, darling? Oh, just a would-be Casanova. And what's that? Oh, a fellow that thinks that offering a girl a lift is a driver's license. Is that so? I'll take care of him. Oh, don't you worry about a little thing like that. Do you think I'd exchange your homely face for anything in the world? No, wait a minute. What was that crack? It goes for me, too, darling. Well, good evening, Miss Tiverton. How are you this evening? Why do people always think it's polite to ask silly questions? Well, well, look who's here. <laughs> Have you had your supper? Yes, thank you. Hmm. Glass of milk and a sandwich, I suppose, standing up at some lunch counter. Oh, well, this rush will soon be over, and then I'll have my evenings to myself again. Do you like some tea, Terry? Uh huh. I'll go fix her. <laughs> well, are you still here? I thought it was time for you to be going home instead of coming here visiting. Well, I suppose it is a little late for elderly people, but Molly and me won't mind if you want to go to bed. If you expect me to resent that, you're wrong. Why on earth don't you sit down? You've been on your feet all day, haven't you? I tell you, that I have. The poor dogs. Every time I make them walk, they, they get sore. And when are you going to get this advancement you're after? Well, the exams are in June, and by July you'll see me a full-fledged detective. Then crime will automatically cease, I suppose. Oh, no, not immediately. You see, there's the honeymoon first. Terry Mulvaney, if you don't make Molly the happiest wife in the world, you'll have me to answer to. It won't be for the want of time. Molly needs a rest. That man Abrams worked her too hard. I don't know what people want with diamonds anyway. Useless things. And yet they can't buy them, they steal them. Oh, no, not much chance these days. Right. Half the crimes in the world are never solved. Well, now, here, let me hold it for you. Hmm. Well, at last I found a use for a policeman. Oh, I don't know. Molly found one. <laughs> Did you ever try it? Are you two still bickering? Uh, uh, let me help you. Well. <laughs> what are you sewing on now, darling, if I'm permitted to ask? Pillow slip, Mr. Mulvaney, for that red head of yours. You'd think you two were married already. When I was a girl, no young lady would have said such a thing. Did you faint to, or was it sworn? I think you'd better confine yourself to questions of more importance. You got your book, Terry? Oh, yes, sir. When an officer takes a prisoner into custody, what is his duty? To search the prisoner for weapons and uh, evidence and conduct him directly to the station using every care to prevent his escape. Good. Under what circumstances is a policeman legally justified in using his pistol? Hmm? What's that correct? Under what circumstances is a policeman legally justified in using his pistol? And let me tell you, Flash, even if she wouldn't give me a tumble, that Fitzgeraldine can have my role any time she gives me the come on. What she got, the others don't have. Oh, boy. She's got everything. Hold on, Spike. We're not mixing pleasure with business. She didn't fall for you. So now we got to find out some other way when Avery is going to ship those diamonds. Rocks fascinate you, don't they? <laughs> How do you think I got the name Diamond Dutch? Chasing after fluffs? Maybe not. 
I never saw you pass one up. Right. But when there's a job on hand, I don't play with fire. You never saw me get burned. Well, I'm getting plenty burned right now. Here we are, all set to make the biggest haul that's ever been pulled. And all you can think about is some dame that you've never even seen. But I'm going to see her. Tomorrow, I think. We better call the whole deal off. When you fall for a new fluff, I know what happens. So do I. But I can also defer the pleasure to an appropriate time. Don't worry, Dutch. I've seen him play a fish for months before she took the hook. All right. But when does Abrams get in the balance of that consignment? That's all I want to know. Why pull this job a day too soon? When by waiting another day, we could get maybe a hundred grand more. Well, you bet I can find out by tomorrow night. Come on. I'll split a grand with you. Five hundred apiece. Okay. That's a bet. You can land that Fitzgerald name. You've got it coming. Mr. Right, young lady. And you are Miss... Uh... That's Mr. Abrams' secretary. Can you wait a moment, please? With pleasure. I come to look for a diamond, and behold, I find a pearl. Uh, careful. So many synthetic pearls on the market these days. Ah, but then I'm an excellent judge. Professional, I would think. On the contrary. Amateur in its literal sense. Mr. Abrams, Mr. Ackroyd's to see you. Go in, please. Sorry, I'm so late. I suppose it's about your closing time. Oh, it's never closing time when we have a client. Won't you sit down? You said over the phone you were looking for stone of about uh, five carats. Yes. A yarder. Send in the stones I selected for Mr. Ackroy. Oh, that looks like a very fine stone you have in your ring. May I see it? Yes. I picked that up in uh, Hatton Garden. Why, you know diamonds. <laughs> it's perfect. Can you match it? Well, you can judge for yourself. I use your glass? Certainly. Aren't you going home, Molly? Doesn't look like it, does it? And I had a date, too. Woman proposes, but business disposes. <laughs> well, I'll be glad to get home and dispose of that corned beef and cabbage that's waiting for me. These are the best, but neither is as good as mine. I'm afraid you're right, but I shall have more in Thursday, and I think finer ones. Could you call then? I'm not sure, but uh, I think I could make it Friday. Well, I'm very sorry, but they'll be gone then. Hmm. Tell you what I'll do. I'll give you a thousand for that one. Miss Fitzgerald, make out a receipt for Mr. Ackroyd for $1,000. So that's that. Here's your receipt, Mr. Ackroyd. Thank you. I'm sorry to have been the cause of keeping you so late, but uh, perhaps I can drive you home. Well, I am rather late. Then why don't you let Mr. Ackroyd take you home? All right. Good night. Good night. Good night.
thanks a lot. You see, I'm not so bad. Wouldn't you take me on approval for a while? Someone else? There's the proof. Hello, Terry. This is Mr. Ackroyd, Officer Mulvaney. Glad to know you indeed. And so you're the reason she was so anxious to get home. Meaning what? Well, you see, Mr. Abrams and I kept her a little late, and uh, I offered to make amends. Oh, so you're a friend of Mr. Abrams, well, that's different. Well, I'm afraid I don't follow. Uh, Terry thought you were another smart aleck, like the one that tried to pick me up the other night. Well, I uh, might be sorely tempted, but uh, I don't think I'd try. I uh, seem to be a better judge of character than you are. Well, uh, good night, Mr. Mulvaney. Good night, Mrs. Joe. Thanks again, Mr. Ackerman. Don't mention it. What's the matter? You don't seem to like the gentleman. I do not. Oh, Terry, you need never be jealous of me. As a matter of fact, I only accepted his offer so that I wouldn't keep you waiting. Well, who is he? All I know is that he just bought a diamond for a thousand dollars. I thought he was another one of those mashes, like the one last night. Uh, I'm not that you. <laughs> You're in love with me, ain't you? Uh-huh. Yes, Pike? You're right. She had to be seen to be appreciated. Yeah, I thought she'd appeal to your sense of proportion. Yeah. Now I have another object in life. And now a snog interferes with a hundred grand, huh? You'd better dig for 500, Dutch. You too, Spike. Did you find out? I not only got a good look at the office, but I found out that the consignment will be complete on Thursday night. To top it off, I drove the young lady home. That wins the bet, I think, Dutch. <laughs> You're a wonder, Flash. Yeah. Well, it cost me a grand to do it. I bought that one. Only worth 800. Well, I'll get most of it back. Take a look at the girl's writing, Spike. Could you imitate it? So she couldn't tell the difference herself. What's on your mind? She seems to prefer an Irish harness bull to me. Being in what, he says. Oh, so you're a friend of Mr. Abrams. Well, that's different. The girl, I'd like to push the ugly mug of him down his own throat. <laughs> <laughs> All right, forget it. We got to think about this job ahead of us. That's just what I'm doing, Dutch. When you're pulling a big job, it's always safer to have some goat to take the rap. Sure. It satisfies the public and gives the cops a chance to save their faces. Right. And this is where I kill two birds with one stone. Officer Mulvaney will be the goat, and Miss Fitzgerald will be... In the... circulation again. But how are you going to do all this? Easy. Just practice on our handwriting, Spike. And we'll send Terry a billy do on Thursday. I'm glad I'm not on duty down here every night. It's too quiet. Yeah, I'd rather be uptown myself. Hello, boys. Well, no pinch tonight, Palmer? Oh, I think the captain's crazy. There's no one below the deadline tonight. Five thousand bucks worth that have to be towed in. Yeah, the best of be cracked up. Give me my old sliver. It's never let me down yet. Fetch wood. Better make the rounds again, boys. Okay, see you in jail. Right. Oh, 
Okay, Flash. See anybody? Pass three balls and they never give us a tumble. Let's get going then. All right. Hey, just a minute, buddy. Well, for crying out loud, what are you doing down here? Well, what's the matter with you, Bill? You got the jitters? Who is it? Why, it's Brick Top Mulvaney from 14th Street. Yeah, and don't go be saying anything at the station about seeing me down here, or I'll wipe up the floor with you. Oh, you know me, Terry. Yes, I know all of you. So long. So long. Hey, what's the gag? Oh, nothing. We've been ribbing him at the station about being in love. He's got a girl works down here. <laughs> well, we've seen somebody anyway. Yeah, let's shove off. Forty-seven, Fishfield Necklace. Check. Number three. Miss Fitzgerald. Call the express company now. Number 54, tray of 16 brooches. Check. Number four. The line seems to be dead. What? Stick them up. All of you. Good work, Terry. Terry. Shut up. And let that be a lesson to all of us. Keep your hat on your mug. You want that brick top to give you away? Now turn to the wall, all of you. Start now. Move over. Keep them up. Guys, I'm looking for. Put him up. Put him up. Put him up. What's the rib? Cut out the innocent stuff. Now, wait a minute. This is no time for kidding. You've got to help me find the guys that slugged me. I wish we were kidding, Terry, but you're under arrest. Under arrest? Well, what am I under arrest for? Murder and robbery of the Abrams office. Oh, wait a minute. The Abrams office? Well, how about Molly? Is she hurt? You ought to know you were there. You can't get away with this. Abrams recognized you and your plug Peters. They all heard the other two call you by name. And even if they hadn't, that rogue and red hair would give you away. We saw you heading for Abrams' office just before the stick-up. Oh, I must have been framed. Say, will you take me back to where they held me? You'll find the rope that was tied me up and the blindfold and the tape that was over my mouth. Wouldn't hurt to take a look. Even if we did, what would that prove? He could have planted them. I was slugged, I tell you. Sure, I was on my way to Abrams. But Molly asked me to call for her. Here, look at me, side pocket. You'll find a note from her. There's nothing there. You killed a guy in cold blood, Mulvaney, and it'll take more than a bluff to get you out of it. Well, they must have frisked me after they slugged me. Oh, please, will you yeah, take Yeah, we'll take you back to Abrams' office. And Captain Simon's there, and you can tell it to him. Go ahead, Max, put him in. Rooney, put that handkerchief over his face. Now, uh, we've got you, Mulvaney. You might just as well confess. But it couldn't be, Terry. Well, naturally, you wouldn't admit it. But I don't think it'll be very difficult to prove that you were his accomplice. Now, you leave her out of this. Mr. Abrams, is that the man who led the hold-up men? It is. Without a doubt, it is. I've seen Mulvaney many times. I couldn't be mistaken. Mr. Abrams, are you sure that he is the man that shot Peters? Yes, I'm sure he is. I was slugged, I tell you. All right, Bill. Take him away and lock him up. Oh, Terry. Terry. It isn't true, darling. I was framed. I'm going to prove it. He's just putting on an act. Take him away. I have a few more questions that I want to ask you. Don't let them bully you, Molly, and don't you worry about me.
I'm sorry, Bill, but I... I was framed and I can't prove it in jail. Yeah, two, six, five, three, two. I'll set it right out. Okay. Calling all cars. Attention, all cars. Mulvaney has escaped in a police car. License number 26532. He drove north on Avenue A. Block all roads and bridges leading from the city. He's handcuffed but armed. Bring him in, boys. That's all. Yes, sir. What can I do for you? There's nothing to be scared of, buddy. You do what I tell you. I want you to cut these handcuffs off me. Yeah, but what'll they do to me for helping a prisoner escape? You're helping an innocent man, and you'll be glad of it one day. Come on, hurry up. And after they're off, you gonna plug me? I'll make a bargain with you. I won't harm a hair on your head if you keep still about this. All right. Calling all cars. Attention, all cars. Mulvaney reported seen on Lincoln Highway speeding west. Use special caution. He's probably listening to these broadcasts, so we can't give location of blockade. That is all. Come on, hurry up. Repeating broadcast 47. Mulvaney reported seen on Lincoln Highway speeding west. Step on it, Dave. We must be right on his tail. Hi. Right. He just left. He made me cut his handcuffs. He went in that direction. Wait a minute, Mr. Tandigal. Do you belong in these parts? No, oh, just this one. What's the next stop? What? Don't you know what train you're on? Oh, sure. Pitchy train. <laughs> no. You've got to go back to Hopeful Junction to get that. <laughs> Where to, sir? Albany. 585. Change of fine planes and Chatham. Billings. The man in section nine answers the description exactly. Take a walk through, but don't let him see you look at him. And if you think he's the guy, we'll stop and send a wire ahead to the sheriff, Pine Plains. Right. Now look here, Mr. Gerald. I'm not as interested in the capture of Mulvaney as our friend the detective is. But I'm an investigator for the insurance company, and my job is to get the diamonds back. Are you going to help me, or are you not? I tell you again, I know nothing. I don't believe Terry had anything to do with it. Wasn't it because you saw him that you fainted? I didn't see him. Terry didn't do it. Then why did you call him by name? I didn't. One of the men called the murderer Terry. I repeated the name in amazement. Never thought it was Terry Mulvaney. Yet you admit you tipped him off. I only told him I wouldn't have to work late after the diamonds were shipped in. Same thing. Are you in the habit of fainting? No. But you did faint at the most convenient time, didn't you? Yes, I did. 
Thanks. Hello? This is Stenton calling by request, Bill. Hi, Diddle Diddle, the captain of the fiddle. What's that? You got him? That's great. Okay. You don't know anything, huh? Then let me tell you something. Mulvaney's well, been caught and he's confessed and he said that you were in on it. I don't believe it. Your name's up, girlie. You'd better cut out the bluffing. You're doing the bluffing. If Terry had been caught, don't you think you would have been overjoyed? Instead, you sat there and watched my reaction. <laughs> you better learn to act. Sorry, I can't say the same thing to you. But I'm very glad to know just how clever you are. Ah, they both think they're clever. Mulvaney has as much chance of getting away as the well-known dog with rubber legs has. How's this? Feel certain passenger on number 19 is Mulvaney, wanted for murder. Meet train at Pine Plains. I hope there's a reward out for him. Maybe there is. We'll stop at Clinton and shoot this ahead. Poor devil. Look at his face. What was it? Hey, John, we found the body to conduct in the brakeman. Well, who are you? And who asked you to come in? If I wanted to be asked, I'd be on the outside most of the time. Oh, I see she's read the news. Are you one of the detectives? No such luck. Death did their work for them. I still have to find the diamonds. But well, you won't find them here. And I hope you'll have the decency to respect the poor girl's grief. I have the decency, ma'am. But I haven't got the time. Perhaps she'll talk now. More than she did last night. Are you ready to talk now? What do you want? You know what I want. The diamond. Can't you leave me alone? Can't you understand anything? Terry didn't do it. And now he can never prove it. He proved that he did do it, you mean? Do you think that getaway of his was an act of innocence? Not on your life. It wasn't, did I tell you? You expect to find the diamonds behind the pictures or under the carpet? Molly said she lived with her aunt. Are you Miss Tibbet? None of your business. I make a lot of things my business. In fact, I sometimes act like an old woman. Oh, no offense, madam. No offense. If you think you can get me angry that way, you're mistaken. And if you're through, there's the door. 
Who were Mulvaney's confederates? He had no confederates. He didn't do it. He didn't. Come on now, Molly. Terry's dead. See those guys that let him down and get all the gravy, do you? I don't know what you mean. You know what I mean. Those fellas have framed him. That's why they called him by his name. You don't want to see them spit Jack by Terry and Cole. Stop it. Don't you think I've suffered enough? Yes, he did. You who killed him. You with your false accusation. You drove him to it. Somewhere the real criminal was laughing at you. Laughing at your stupidity. I'd laugh too. I'd like to laugh. But Terry, the joke's on him too. think he can pull through? Oh, he'll be all right. I'll probably have to do a little plastic surgery on his face. Then you'll be in your element. Well, it's always interesting to try to improve upon nature. Wonder who the beggar is. There's no identification. Well, we'll find out soon. He'll recover consciousness now that I've removed the pressure. Suit. You're telling me? Well, everything still seems to be under control. Sure. The Dicks haven't the ghost of an idea that that was our job. They're still sure it was Mulvaney. But the cops are still watching every fence for the stones. Certainly. Why not? Every time there's a job pulled, the guys make the same mistake. They want to cash in right away. So they settle the stuff while it's hot, and they're picked up. I tell you, Dutch, we have the right idea. Handle each job like a legitimate business. And don't expect any profits for the first year. And that's why we're still in business. And never even an entry on the blotter against us. Well, those Abram Diamonds are staying undercover for a year. Okay with me. Now I suppose you're going after the dame. Not yet, Dutch. I know women. And I know that Molly Fitzgerald is still thinking of Mulvaney as a martyred hero. Nurse tells me that you're feeling a little better. Do you think that you can answer a few questions? There was no identification in the remains of your clothes, so we don't even know your name. O'Malley. Ted O'Malley. Ted O'Malley. Uh, have you any relatives or friends that we can notify? Uh, by the way, what kind of a nose did you have? I mean, I shall have to build up your nose from practically nothing. Couldn't you get me a photo to go by? I'm afraid he's a little too weak yet, Doctor. Oh, well, I, I'll give him a classical one. Jennings, if I thought I had any brains, I'd blow them out. What's the matter? But wouldn't it be a terrible thing to drill a hole in one skull and find it empty? Am I to gather that you're still thinking of that Mulvaney case? I start up in the middle of the night thinking about it. I'm afraid your vanity is wounded. Wounded? It's mutilated. So much time has passed and not a single clue. And a fortune in diamonds disappears. Strange case, all right. I'm going to see that Fitzgerald girl again. I think she must be bluffing. Where's your winter coat? Oh, I sold it. I won't need it. Well, this is your business, Molly. But I'd like to see anybody try to force me to leave town. You don't seem to understand, Annie. I'm branded as a thief. Nobody will give me a job here. Don't forget you'll always have a home here. Remember that. Oh, that must be the man for my trunk. I'm going to fix you a lunch to eat on the train. What's that a 
May I come in? I certainly. I'm just leaving town. You mean for good? Yes. Well, I didn't know it was as bad as that. I haven't seen Mr. Abrams again until today, and of course I learned that you were no longer there. I suppose you also learned that I was a thief. Do you remember that I prided myself on being a good judge of character? Yes, but I don't quite... Uh, may I sit down? Of course. I heard about the robbery at the time, but I had no idea that you were supposed to be implicated. I wasn't. You don't have to tell me. That's what I meant when I said I was a judge of character. Thank you. I also gather from Abrams that uh, no one will employ you. What do you expect? Of course they won't. I will. What do you mean? I'm interested in the Alhambra, the restaurant and night spot on 50th. There is a vacancy for a day cashier. You mean you're offering me a job like that? I am? I have the courage of my convictions. How can I ever thank you? By reporting for work at 10 in the morning. Yes, we we can leave the bandages off now. <laughs> sure, Doc, and that won't make me mad. Uh, no, I suppose it probably won't, but uh, evidently you would like to see what I've done for you. That I would. Well, O'Malley, how have I done? Hey, don't break all my fingers. Well, Doc, that's exactly how I feel. <laughs> and I doubt very much whether I'll ever be able to again. But evidently you, you approve. Tell me, is it as good as the original? Well, Doc, I think it's a bit improvement. And if it wasn't for me head, I wouldn't even know myself. Well, you know, you, you really could die that and have a little joke with your friend. Huh? Oh, yes. It would be a joke, wouldn't it? Well, I'm really glad that you're pleased. And the railroad company will be, too. You'll probably let them down easier. Uh, what do you mean? Why, the insurance adjuster has been here several different times. They offer to settle with you for $2,000 in cash and all your hospital bills. $2,000? Yes, and you won't have to go to court and give half of it away to some attorney. $2,000? Oh, that would come in handy. Why, yes, of course it would. Uh, incidentally, here's uh, the check that the insurance adjuster left and... Uh, also, his form of a release. Uh, you can sign that if you care to. It's entirely up to you. <laughs> Doc, I wonder if I could have that in cash. Why, I, I suppose so. Just give them toss the check, and I'm quite sure they'll cash it. Come in. Thank you, sir. Won't you sit down? You're the investigator employed by the insurance company on the Abrams robbery. Correct. Well, sir, I'd like to write a wrong. Commendable ambition, but I don't see the point. Well, Mr. Pearson, it's only a hunch, but a faith in human nature. Would you mind telling me who you are and what you are? Well, I'm just a dumb bug. I'm training over here at Artie Nolan's, and I come from Colorado. And I had a brother here on the farm, and he got into a bit of trouble. We were pals from the time we were kids, and I'm sure that he'd never do anyone any harm. Mr. Pearson, that man was Terry Mulvaney. Mulvaney? Yes, Terry Mulvaney. Now I have a bit of money and I'd like to use it to clear his name. Have you seen the police? No. The cops were only looking for convictions. He was wanted for murder. His death closed the case. Now you have no axe to grind or politics to play. That's right. I'm a private individual, responsible only to myself and the insurance company. And your object is to recover the stolen property. Right again. You may be a pub, but you're by no means dumb. Now, your brother told a queer story to the police. But if his story was true, who framed him? And what reason could they have? That I don't know, but it gave you and the cops a wrong steer, didn't it? <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. By the way, you happen to know where I can find his gal. I don't know what address, but her name is uh, Fitzgerald. Just a minute. I'll look it up for you. Miss 
Jennings. Get the Mulvaney file. Quick, the fingerprint record. As long as you know the town, I'll show you over to Miss Fitzgerald. Oh, well, that's, oh, that's, that's, that's all right. Only be careful not to shock her. Remember, she thinks you're dead, Terry. How did you know? Because your yarn sounded phony. I watched you closely and decided that your hair might have been dyed. So I proceeded to get your fingerprints in my cigarette case. And they compared exactly with the ones found on the stolen police car. If you think I wanted to be a detective? You're doing all right. We're going to work together on this case. I take it that's what you want. That's more than I expected. Tell me, how did you work this substitution with the dead man? Well, I heard a couple of the Rick and crew say that his face was all gone, so when they went for the stretcher, I emptied my pockets into his. Quick thinking, my lad. Yeah, but I didn't think very long. When I come to, I was in the hospital. And the nurse was reading the newspapers to me. In other words, you woke up and found yourself dead. That's about it. Well, you've awakened to plenty of worry. And we've got to solve this case before the police get on to you. <laughs> they won't ever get on to me. Because I really have got a brother, Ed, in Colorado. Does Molly know that? Sure. Why? Then you've got to remain Ed, even to her. <laughs> oh, I could never fool Molly. <laughs> the doctor didn't change me that much. Well, you must try. You know, brothers sometimes look very much alike. Well, I want Molly to know that I ain't dead. All right. Tell her Terry escaped to your place in Colorado. You came east to clear up the case. Well, couldn't I? No, no, you can't take that chance with Molly. She might give you away by word or look. And at a time like this, that'd be too much of a risk. So, come on. <laughs> You're a hard man. We saw Pearson outside talking to a guy. Pearson? All the insurance companies do. Forget him. What'd you find out? Well, we can get rid of a few grand's worth. It's safe enough now. You don't think Pearson means anything? Not a thing. He used to park on Molly's trail, but he's given that up. Well, I still claim you shouldn't have given that name a job here. Why? Well, Flops have brought down bigger guys than you, Pat. Oh, forget it. Pour yourself a drink. about that. I just wanted you to meet a friend of mine. This gentleman here has convinced me that Mulvaney was innocent. Terry! No, Ed. Terry told you about me, didn't he? Would you mind if we sat down? Of course not. Yes, Terry did tell me about you, but you might be his twin. No, is that nice? Here, I thought I was much better looking. You talk like him, too. Of course, your hair is darker and your nose is different, but if Terry weren't dead... He's not dead, Molly. He escaped from the train wreck. He's not dead? Are you sure? Have you seen him? Yes. He's at my place in Colorado. Is he well? As well as I am, and I never felt better in my life. Now, if you'll dance with me, I'll tell you all about him. Oh, I'm glad you're having to dance in this jam. I want to tell Auntie. Can we all go home and you can tell me on the way? Now, wait a minute, wait a minute. How about your supper? Oh, I'm glad you're happy to eat. Come on, Mr. Smith. No, you two run along. I'll stay here. Hey, boss. Pearson and that ate we saw him without sight was talking to Molly. She's acting up like a two-year-old. Now, 
don't you get scared the next time you see me. Good night, Ed. And you be careful. Careful of what? Oh, you know, a nice young fellow and a pretty girl and a romantic moon. Must I tell you the rest of that? Come on, Mr. Mulvaney. like you've been asleep at the switch. If it hadn't been for Mr. Ackroyd's kindness, I'd still be out of work. Isn't that right? That's right. Now look, if it's some money that you're needing, like Oh, no, I couldn't think of it. I'm doing nicely now. Young man, your heart's in the right place, but I can't say the same for your brain. Uh, Mary. Now, wait a minute. Maybe Miss Tibbet is right. I'm always right. I objected to your brother as a policeman. But no young man in his senses would ever take up prize fighting as a profession. Look, now. How about Gene Tunney? He seems to have done all right for himself. As soon as he got any sense, he quit. Just the same, I want you to know that you brought more happiness into this house than has been here for many a day. I like you. <laughs> Thanks. You know, that goes for the both of us, and if I wasn't in love already, I'd be asking you to marry me. Oh, go along with you. You're just another Terry yourself. <laughs> Good night, and God bless you. Well, I guess I'd better be going, too. Oh, no. I want to hear it all over again. Again? Oh, my dear child, I told you in the taxi and I told you in the park and I'm just after telling your Aunt Mary here. I know, you're a darling. I didn't mean to say that. Well, what's wrong with calling me a darling? I don't know, something just came over me. I suppose it's because I'm so grateful to you, Mr. Mulvaney. I thought you promised to call me Ed. Huh. What's the matter? I don't know. Ed? I think I've known you forever. <laughs> Just the way I want you to feel. You don't understand. Please go. I'm sorry. Will you forgive me? For what? I was going anyway. I suppose you think I'm crazy. I feel crazy. After all these months of anxiety, you suddenly appear and sweep it all away. I want you to know how happy you've made me. And how grateful I am to you. You shouldn't have done that. You misunderstood. I think not. But it isn't fair. You know I'm engaged to Terry, and you said you were in love with somebody else. I said no such thing. You did. You told Aunt Mary. You meant? I'll stay in love and walk. Good night, Molly, dear. Has he gone? Oh, Aunt Mary, what will I do? <laughs> What's the matter, Molly? Oh, I know it's terrible, but the voice, the manner of him. I thought sure it... Sure of what? He was scary. Oh, <laughs> Don't be crazy. They're almost dead ringers, it's true. But Terry wouldn't dare show his face around here. <laughs> there, there. You sent for me, Mr. Ackroyd? Yes, yeah, come here. Sit down, Molly. I want to have a talk with you. Cigarette? No, thank you. Did you have a good time last night? Yes, I heard some splendid news. Why do you ask? Well, I happened to see you go out with, uh... Mr. Mulvaney. Mulvaney? Yes, he's a pugilist. Oh, a fighter, eh? Well, I never heard of him. He's Terry's brother from Colorado. He's training with Artie Nolan now. So if it isn't one Mulvaney, it's another. Why do you say that? Look, I've been pretty nice to you, haven't I? I've left you alone and never bothered you. 
Waiting until you got that crook Mulvaney out of your mind. Now, don't interrupt. I'll do the talking. I wasn't going to say anything until you got rid of the blues. And now, when I see you're happy for the first time, it's with another guy. Don't I deserve a better deal than that? I'm sorry. I had no idea you felt that way. Listen. You're not as dumb as that. Why do you think I gave you a job here when everybody else thought you were a crook? Mr. Pearson doesn't think so now. Listen, Molly. The cops have been on this case for months now, and there aren't any clues. If you think that he'll ever be proved innocent, you've got another thing coming. Even if he were, what's the matter with me? Don't you think I'm a better catch than an Irish harness bull with a brogue as thick as a shillelagh? Now, me darling, it's time you got wise to yourself and started being nice to the fine gentleman that's been nice to you. Wait a minute! Sorry, Flash. Well, I shall appeal to your reason at a more convenient time. You mean to bust in on the party? What about the stuff? Dutch has got a deal to unload the whole lot. And the guy's waiting. I think we'd better wait. Molly was just telling me that Pearson is off the Mulvaney angle. What do you mean, off the Mulvaney angle? That's what I want to find out. Send Al up here at once. What? What's the matter? Molly's walked out. That's the best news I've heard today. Shut up. She must believe I'm an awful sap if she thinks I can't keep her from walking out. Well, maybe it'll be more fun this way. Okay, Oscar. Keep Molly's job open. What are you, boss? Yes, Al. You used to hang around Ali Nolan, didn't you? Sure, that's how I learned to use my mitt. Hmm. Unfortunately, uh, this job calls for brains. However, I'll try you out. I want you to go back there and get to know a pug from Colorado. He's a brother of Terry Mulvaney's. What's he look like? You saw him last night going out with Molly. Oh, I thought there was something familiar about that mud's face. What do I do, spoil his looks? Oh, no, nothing so crude. Just get his confidence and, uh, and when you... Uh... All right, Ed, you're shaping up fine. Now, let's call it a day. <laughs> Thanks, Artie. Say, I haven't seen you around here much before, have I? No, I'm a chauffeur now. Can't get around like I used to. But I like to work out with you whenever I can. Well, that goes double. <laughs> let's make it often, huh? Okay. Well, I have to be on my way as soon as I hit the shower. How do you feel? <laughs> sure, and I'm feeling fine. There's nothing like a good workout in the shower. Yeah, I'm going to get with you again. Or maybe some night when we have the car, we'll go places. Well, I'm not much for that night stuff. Say, Al, who is it you work for? Flash Ackroyd, the guy that owns the Alhambra. Oh, that's funny. I met a gal that works there. She used to be engaged to my brother. And boy, did I fall for her. What's her name? Molly Fitzgerald. You mean she used to work there? Well, what's the matter? Was she fired? She walked out. Didn't you know? Oh, I haven't seen her today. I, I can't see why she should quit. I don't know. Search me. Looks all right to me, boss. Bit of a sap, maybe. Admitted he'd fallen hard for Molly. He said that, did he? Yeah. Look, what do you care? Just give me the word. Go get him. Bring them up here. Now nah, you're talking. I'm telling you, I couldn't be mistaken. No two men could ever whistle exactly like that. Funny, though, that he should be working as a chauffeur. Maybe not as funny as you think. I just got your message. Oh, you're not mad at me after all, huh? I'm in for... Excuse me? We're kissing you now. 
Are you going to learn to love me? That's not fair to me or to Terry. I told you before that all fair in love and war. Repeating it doesn't make it so. Molly, sit down. I want to talk to you. You know, from the first minute I walked into that place last night and laid eyes on you, the heart within me stopped. And then it started to pound like a trip And that sounds something like love, doesn't it? Not necessarily. It could be indigestion. Once a snooper, always a snooper. That's what I'm being paid for. Why did you walk out on that He said that he had an ulterior motive in giving me a job. How did you come to meet him in the first place? He came to buy a diamond from Abrams. And that checks. With what? Theory, young man. How long before the robbery was that? Oh, just a few days. Then if he bought a diamond, he got a receipt. Yes, I made it out myself. Better than I expected. Then that would give them a copy of your handwriting. Remember the note from you that Terry told the police about? Yes. Well, that would put Terry just where they wanted him. One of them might have had red hair, or he could have worn a red wig. And if he was able to imitate Terry's brogue... Oh! What's the matter? Ackerboy. Ackerboy gave me a perfect imitation of it. Hmm. And that checks. Somehow I think we're getting places. Do you really think so? Yes, I do. And you needn't worry about a job anymore. I can get you back with Abrams any time you want. But you'll soon have Terry back, and then you'll be getting married. Yeah, hey, wait a minute, wait a minute. What's that, Clark? Do you think Molly will take a cop when she has a chance to get an up-and-coming pugilist like myself? Uh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. The poor kid, she don't know whether it's Terry or Ed she loves. Leave it to me. What's the matter, Miss Fitzgerald? Mr. Pearson, you really believe Terry's in Mr. Pearson? Why, certainly. Why do you ask? Because I... I don't know whether I should tell even you, but... That's Terry. What are you talking about? That's Terry Mulvaney, not his brother Ed. I wondered why I was so attracted to him. I thought it was his voice, but his eyes were the same, too. Go on. It was when he cupped his hand to his ear and said, What's that crack? Then I knew for certain. I tell you, Terry's come back from where I don't know, but I'm afraid. There's nothing to be afraid of. Terry didn't come back from the dead. He came back from the hospital. I've known it all along. Then I've given the gold. I'm going to give him a piece of my mind. Oh, just a moment. It was all my fault. I insisted. I was afraid that, try as you might, you would give him away. He had no right to make love to me. Well, who had a better right? Nevertheless, you wait. Don't you tell him. Run along, you two. I've got to go down to police headquarters. Will you see me home, Ed? Will I? In a taxi through the park. Ed, there's something I must tell you, and it may relieve your mind. <laughs> well, my darling, you go right ahead and tell me. I've been true to Terry all this time, even though Auntie and everybody said I was a fool. They did? Yes. And it wasn't until he disappeared that I found out what a wretch he really was. Well, that couldn't be so. It's a pack of lies, I tell you. No, the truth, all right. Well, just show me one black eye that would ever say a thing against me. Well, against me, brother. I can show you a dozen people who bribed him. Girls he wronged. Well, it's lies, I tell you. It's lies. Well, now tell me what you're laughing at. Terry Mulvaney, alias. Brother Ed. Oh, Terry, most... Is... Mm -hmm. Nah, Terry. You're lying to me. Oh. Molly, my darling. Oh, Terry, what happened? Why didn't you tell me? I was making me escape on a train and it was wrecked. I changed places with a dead man. Oh, Terry, you poor dear. No. I was never so rich in all my life. You must think I'm terrible. But it was mean of you not to tell me. Mr. Pearson wouldn't let me. Yes, I know. He told me. Well, 
now wait a minute. This ain't the place I told you to go. Right. But it's the place you're going. Well, what's the racket? No racket at all. A guy just wants to talk to you. Come on, both of you. Here you are. Well, what do you want? Just this. I don't stand for anybody muscling in on my territory. Meaning Miss Fitzgerald? You guessed it, Mulvaney. You flatter yourself, don't you? My advice to you is to get out of town at night. Because if you're here in the morning, you'll be in the morgue, see? As for you, Miss Fitzgerald, you'd better come back to work. If you don't, there'll be a shortage discovered in your accounts. And that, after being mixed up in a diamond robbery, would be uh, just too bad. Just a minute. Throw him out. He gets noisy. Well, you know what to do. But, boss, this guy is in Ed Mulvaney. What do you mean? I heard him in the cab saying that he had changed places with a dead man. His real name is Terry Mulvaney. That it is. What about it? You wanted for murder. What are you doing back in town? Looking for the guy that framed me. Still sticking to that story? Who do you suspect now? Who do you think? Got the car handy, Al? Sure, boss. See them home. That guy knows more than he was telling. Pearson must be onto something. I knew that name would snag us sooner or later. Who oh, snagged? Maybe they don't know a thing. I'm just not taking any chances. The alley's full of cops. What do you think I've been training at Artie Nolan for? <laughs> Everything checks. You give Terry all the credit for recovering those mistakes. Terry, you always wanted to be a detective, didn't you? That I did, sir. Well, the chief says you are. Maybe uh, you could use this. A solid there. I think they'd much rather have a wedding ring. You can have them both. On the house. 